Hi, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. I'm Francesca, and I'm the Eco Schools Project Officer at Keep Northern Island Beautiful, coordinating projects such as the Young Reporters for the Environment. We are working in conjunction today with our Tackling Plastics NI project, which is funded by the Department of Agriculture, Environment, and Rural Affairs. Today, I'm delighted to have Anna Neal with us. Welcome, Anna. Anna is a young environmentalist and ocean enthusiast. She will tell us about her journey on protecting our pristine seas one cleanup at a time. Anna is also the founder of, of the Pristine Project NI. She is an active young reporter for the environment and a member of St. Dominic's Grammar School's Eco Committee, leading the way on eco actions and tackling the plastic problem affecting our oceans. By the end of the webinar, we really hope you will have a better idea of how you can play your part in tackling the plastic problem, protect the environment, and make a positive impact on our oceans. Before I hand over to Anna, I'd like to introduce my colleague and co-host, Claire. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this lovely sunny spring day. I'm Claire. I am the Tackling Plastics Communications Officer. And today I'll be monitoring the chat for Anna. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Any questions you have, make sure you pop them into the Q&A box. And we'll get them over to Anna before the end of the webinar. Um, and the chat function is there if you have any comments or observations as well. So we're delighted to be joined by Anna Neal. Take it away, Anna. Hello, my name is Anna Neal, and I'm here today to talk to you about my journey in trying to save the ocean and battling the plastic problem, and try to encourage you to start yours. So with no further delay, I present to you Protecting Our Pristine Seas. In the beginning, in my first encounter with with the threats facing our ocean was whilst on holiday in Dubai in 2016 when I had the pleasure of meeting Lisa the dolphin. Before, before swimming with the dolphin they briefly touched on the threats facing the, the ocean. Then in towards the end of 2017 Blue Planet 2 was broadcast on the BBC. Their last episode was based around, was based around protecting our oceans and the threats facing them. And I'm sure you will remember many of the horrifying images of litter, litter cluttering beaches and oceans and suffering marine mammals and other animals. This, this was a real wake up call to me. And, and I became determined to do whatever I could to save the ocean. Fact. Between 4.8 and 12.7 million tonnes of plastic enter the ocean every year. Can you imagine how many plastic bottles that would be? And here are some basic threats to marine life. Entanglement. As you'll see in this photo, this is a photo of the body of a dogfish that was tangled in a reusable face mask. This is a perfect example of the dangers of entanglement. Entanglement involves a marine creature getting caught in a piece of litter which can restrict their airway. Ingestion of plastic. As you can see in the top photo, it's a photo of a seabird with a stomach full of plastic. This is, a pro this is the process of a seabird or other marine mammal digesting, digesting plastic which then blocks their digestive system restricting them from intaking any other food and therefore starving them. And rafting. Rafting is when a turtle or seal or other creature um, takes refuge on floating debris and they then drift away from, away from their home and into waters that could be too hot, too cold or not have a sufficient food supply. Getting started. In early 2018, I set, I set up my first website using SimpleSight. And soon after, we decided to see what the litter was like on Helen's Bay Beach. It was just me, my mum and my two brothers, and we collected four bags of litter. And this beach is one of the cleaner beaches in Northern Ireland. By March 2018, we had spread the word and our friends and family were able to come to our beach cleans. 
We set up a new and more professional logo and website and my mum started a Facebook page. We also received a generous donation from a friend, which we used to buy litter pickers and bags. This photo shows one of our Murloc beach claims in the summer of 2018. As you can see, we were able to involve many of our friends and family and collected quite a lot of litter. Getting people involved. One of our first courses of action was to involve my primary school's eco committee. We went down to Torella Beach for an afternoon and we collected 29 bags of litter and had a great time. Eventually, we involved the Harbour Masters at Art Glass Beach, who were very generous in helping us to set up a risk assessment and also come to most of our beach cleans there. Local residents also got involved and came down from their seaside homes to the beach to help us. And other enthusiasts found out through social media and radio shoutouts and generously joined us. Young reporters, through entering Young Reporters for the Environment competitions, we were also able to um, get, get more publicity. Here are some of our main helping hands. Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful <clears throat> offered us um, publicity and beach cleaning supplies. And they also um, recommended adopting spot first. Adopt a spot is when, is when you choose to um, clean a beach or other area at least, at least four times a year. They will provide litter pickers and bags and, and high vis vests. We chose to adopt our glass beach as it's one of the dirtiest beaches in Northern Ireland and needs the most attention. We also got a lot of help through, through a grant from Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful. We spent this money on, on skip hire at our glass beach as the, there is a colossal amount of litter down there and it's very difficult to get it to properly dispose of it without, without a skip. And another helping hand was Daisy. As you can see, this little, um, this little green guy in, in the photo, she, um, she was so kind to in interview us and, and the interview can be found on, on YouTube, which, which is helping us get publicity. Our plastic promise. A plastic promise is a vow that you take to um, reduce the use of single use plastic. The protect our pristine seas plastic promise is to reduce the amount of single use plastic in the oceans by hosting regular beach cleans. And the St Dominic School Plastic Promise is to reduce plastic cutlery use, plastic use of plastic straws and takeaway cups. And I would encourage you to make your plastic promise. It is a really great thing to do. Today, we have collected more than two tonnes of litter, most of which has been found at our glass beach. We have held 20 beach cleans in a variety of locations in Northern Ireland and found all sorts of things, including toy, toys, debris, fishermen's gloves, lobster pots, ropes, and tons of single-use plastic. Here are some images from our cleanups. These photographs were taken at our glass beach where you can really see the extent of the litter on this beach. Most of the litter is washed in from the sea. Here are some images of, of us collecting litter. As you can see, we, can fa we find a lot of name brand packaging and even full bags of litter. We also have a big problem with fishermen's gloves, which my eight-year-old brother, Connor, has vowed, to, has vowed to collect a full bag of gloves every time we go, we go to the beach. And, and all the time, he is successful. Here are some images of our, of our, of our kind volunteers joining us at our glass beach. And here, and here are some of our helping hands. The, um, these women are enthusiasts who heard about us through social media. And these are the Art Glass Harbour Masters, James and Chris, who have been a great help to us over the years. Here are some images of the sorts of litter we would find. This is plastic cutlery, and this is plastic cutlery. And it's part of the reason that my school avoid to reduce their use of plastic cutlery, as, as it is very harmful to sea life. And here's my younger brother, Connor, standing next to a fish that he made with the plastic gloves. 
we can find hundreds of plastic gloves on the beach and enough to create large pictures such as this one. Here are some images from our cleanups. As you, as you can see, we, um, we, do, we do collect a lot, of, a lot of litter, but it really depends on the beach. Our, gla our glass is one of the dirtier beaches and we, we've always found up to, up to 50 bags of litter here. And here's an image of our glass after one of our cleanups. Unfortunately, we, we cannot maintain this state. And by the time we arrive, um, and by the time we get back down a month or so later, it, it's the same as it was um, before, possibly even worse. Here are some of our helping hands. Bob Allen is a, is a wildlife photographer. In February of 2018, we attended his presentation on I Below Zero. He, um, he was kind enough to sign, to sign a book, sign one of his books for us, and we gave him a protect our pristine seas t-shirt. He, he, he inspired us to, to help help our oceans and his and his work under underwater is hugely inspirational and, and has encouraged me to continue scuba diving. Joyce Frieder Rankin is an award-winning photojournalist and one of the best speakers on climate change. She, um, she invited us down to her, her house near the Giants Causeway to um, in, interview me for her, document, her documentary, Degrees to Extinction. She told us a story about, she was sitting, she was sitting in Antarctica with, Antarctica with a camera and she saw a Coke bottle float past. If a Coke bottle can reach Antarctica, how much litter do you think is in the rest of the ocean? Joyce was also kind enough to come to one of our art glass beach cleans where she got to see for herself the extent of the litter at this beach. Achievements and experiences. Each of these achievements has been a further platform to show people what is happening to our oceans and to get the message out about single use plastic. Young people do have a voice and it is our duty to use it wisely and to have our planet's best interests at heart. This is not about the awards, but about proving to you that if I can do it, so can you. In 2019, we won, we won the Lisburn and Castlereagh Litter, Litter Hero Award. At this event, we got to meet lots of influ influential people and it, it was a real honor to attend. In 2019, we attended, um, myself and a few other members of the School Eco Committee attended the School's Ocean Assembly in Dublin. We got to listen to like presentations from like-minded young environmentalists and um, take part in, in, in enjoyable and interesting workshops. In later that year, we, um, we entered the Young Reporters of the Environment Com competition um, a, guard, a guard of my school eco committee placed placed in the competition. Um, my my Photoshop received an honourable mention. It is called "There's No Escaping the Problem." This year, we have entered this this photo of the of a of the, strang, of the strangled dog fish and caught to that to the same competition, calling it "Unmasking the Problem." And early, earlier this year. Um, I won the 2020 Lucia Quinney Mee Campaigners Award. Lucia Quinney Mee was an inspirational young girl who campaigned for, liver, for organ donation. She unfortunately passed away after, rece after receiving her, for her fourth liver transplant. And this award has been set up in her honor to recognize young campaigners. It was a real honor, honor to receive this award and meet with Lucia's family. Lockdown and how we adapted. Unfortunately, over lockdown, we, we have not been able to um, carry out any beach cleans because of the travel restrictions and social distancing. So instead, I turned to helping out in the garden and beekeeping and beekeeping with my neighbors. Whilst, um, whilst beekeeping, I was able to learn loads about bees, which are an important part of our ecosystem as they, poll as they pollinate flowers. I was able to Harvest honey, help to maintain a hive, re relocate a swarm of bees, refurbish a hive, and keep the bees happy and healthy. This photo shows um, 
shows me helping my neighbour to capture the swarm bees and relocate them to the, to the hive I refurbished. It was a really fun and interesting experience and I, and I do plan to keep up this hobby. Going forward, we hope Beach Clean should hopefully recommence, recommence this summer, but, but that depends on but that depends on the on the current guidelines, like most things nowadays. We would love it if you would come join us, but if but if you can't, every time you go to the beach, bring a bag with you, and you will be very surprised at what you will find. And we will keep trying to save the ocean. Remember, we may each only be one droplet, but together we are an ocean. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Anna, that was really good. Your contribution was amazing. And sorry to interrupt you about the noise, but it was actually a good thing to do because we wanted to hear every single word you had to say and your message. Now, Claire, I think that there are a um, couple of questions, maybe are the same thing. Would you mind checking this and letting us know what it is? Okay. Um. Folks, don't forget to get your questions, and we've got one in already from Kieran. But any questions you have from Anna, put them into the Q and A box. So, hi, Kieran. Um, Kieran asks Anna, "What is the strangest thing you have ever found when cleaning up a beach?" I'm sure you've got loads of answers for this one. Yeah, well, we find a lot of weird stuff. But, um, one of the weirdest things. This is probably something that was left on left on the beach by somebody. It was like a full jar of like tinned food, and um, we've all, we've also found like a full working bike, and um, um, we've also found a lot of shoes and even a cowboy hat on the beach. <laughs> That's really odd. There was somebody else actually asking the same question, so I guess it's quite an interesting topic to, to chat about. Um, and I'd like to ask you something about um, like the first thing you thought when you did your first cleanup and you found so much litter. What was your first thought? Um, well, I, I was really surprised because it was a really beautiful beach and I didn't really understand why people would want to like leave, leave litter there or throw their litter in the ocean because it was just destroying the beach and the beach is something that most people enjoy and I thought mm -hmm. why, why would you not want to like protect it from litter exactly um Claire I think there are more questions yes some of the questions coming in so Anna I'm sure you've seen a lot of face masks on the beach um, Mrs Coyle has mentioned have you found many face masks on your beach cleans um Yes, we have found a lot of face masks since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And things like gloves and things like that too. Have you know, you've noticed quite a few of those, haven't you? Yeah, we find loads of fishermen's gloves because um, quite often they're incorrectly disposed of. And the Art Glass Harbour Masters are, um, are actually trying to get through to the um, fishermen around Art Glass about it, just see if they can dispose of their gloves better. On a bit of a more positive note, have you found any creatures on a beach clean when you're out and about like crabs or jellyfish maybe? Yeah, we've, see, we've seen lots of crabs and we find jellyfish. And we have also found lots of starfish as well, which, which is really cool. And I love starfish, they're great. Anemones and sea urchins as well. Sophia has asked as well, Anna, what is the biggest number of bags you've filled in a day of cleaning? I think you might have answered that already, but you want to remind people? I think it's somewhere around 50 or 60 out in, up at our glass. In the one area, that's incredible. That's really a lot of bags. Anna, there is also a question about, do you plan, maybe I can help you answering that as well. Do you plan to go global at any time in the future? Um, yeah, it's, it's something that I would think about. Um, we've started we've started up an Instagram account as well. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be wanting to get a bit more publicity. Yeah, that would be good. And I was actually, this could be for of interest 
to everybody. I was uh, telling Anna that uh, because we run educational programs that are international ones, like Eco Schools, Young Reporters for the Environment, then Anna can have an international platform through these programs as well. So we will start working together uh, on that. So hopefully she will have a, a global impact as well at some point soon. There was also another question, Anna, that uh, comes from Patricia. It's, she's asking, how can pupils uh, be involved, can get involved with your project? And if it's best to join your school eco-committee, eco-group? Um, well, if, there, if your school does offer an eco-committee, then I definitely suggest joining it because you can get um, a lot of benefits and help the environment out of it. And... And if you want to, if you want to get like pupils involved, um, you could you could start you could start an eco committee, or you could maybe arrange um, a, maybe arrange a beach clean and um, ta and like ta tag live here love here or protect our pristine seas in it if you post about it. That's great, Anna. We've got a question from well, two people have asked the one question, so we've got D Kennedy and Johnny Hall. Um, and they want to know what inspired you to begin doing what you're doing. I know you started this presentation mentioning it, but do you want to remind people why you do what you do? Um, well, I was massively inspired by the Blue Planet and its final episode where it um, touched on protecting the ocean. And that really got me thinking, well, if, if the ocean's in danger, then, some, then, somebody, then we need to do something about it. So I was massively inspired by that. And um, Greta Thunberg to me is also very inspirational. And as well as as well as um, as well as David Attenborough and Doug Allen and Joyce Fudder Rankin. That's great. And uh, somebody wants to know what was your favorite experience when trying to trying to save the environment? Um, well, I had a great time at the, at a beach at a beach clean in 2018 in the summer where where we invited all of when we invited most of my classmates and all my classmates came down and that that was really really great and also I I really I really I really enjoy entering the YRE competitions because really fun coming up with entries for those yeah um, Anna, there are lots of people that are um, like saying your what you do is great and your enthusiasm is amazing. But uh, there is George uh, who wants to know: Do you ever feel downhearted when you return to the beach and it's covered in litter again? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's very sad. Like when, when we get down, it's like we we cleaned this beach. How how is it so filthy again? It's only been like a month. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's it's really disappointing to see that mm -hmm. there's so much litter on the beaches because it's like it's like hurting living creatures and I don't think that living creatures should ever be hurt yeah in fact on this note I'd like to ask you if you ever found any item that comes from really far away and where was this item coming from um well we find we find a lot of a lot of um food packaging that may, that may have come from the UK and we find um yeah that's kind of that's not kind of all that I can think of it's come from far away we find a lot we find a lot of toys as well that would mm -hmm. that, like would have come from far away because you can kind of tell by how how like um dirty they are they've been in the sea for a long time yeah good follow-up question Anna um Evelyn from St. Joseph's and Carried Off wants to know, would you like to continue working in this sort of area when you're an adult uh, as your full-time job? Yeah, yes, I would definitely consider it. I plan to study, hopefully I'll be able to study natural sciences in Cambridge, which would, which would hopefully give me a bit of a boost or, or, marine, or marine science in an extra university. And I def, I'm definitely going to keep up with like, um, um, beach cleaning and ocean organization. Anna, this question could be very encouraging for uh, peers and young people like yourself. Uh, do you find it difficult to complete this work alongside all your work for school? How do you manage to keep them on top um, of everything? So 
sometimes I can find I have quite a lot to do. But most most of the time, I'm able to to um man, manage my times, make sure make sure I put put enough time in, in everything, you know. Yeah. Claire, do we want to go for another couple of questions and then we... So I think we're coming up to half past 11, folks. So any other burning questions, make sure you get them in in the next few minutes. So um, I have another question, which was about how you balance. Um, I'm sure everyone's burning to know, how do you balance, Anna, all the work you do at school with all your beach cleans? Do you find it hard to do both? Um it's it's okay I've, I've got I've gotten used to it and it's been easier it's easier through uh, it's easier through it's been a lot easier through lockdown as well because I've had a bit less work to do but yeah I just I just try to make sure that I've I do what I need to do and then anything anything that can wait for like I don't know another another day or so I'll I'll just make sure I I, I prioritize what I need to do and it's nice because obviously your family are, are helping you and they're very involved so you, you like doing it together as a family don't you it's a nice yeah. activity to get out with your mum and your brothers and sisters because it was great seeing the photos of you all there together on the beach all involved as a family um we've got another question here from I mean little scan here what's the biggest thing you find Sarah wants to know I think did you mention a bike there earlier on Anna maybe you find something bigger than a bike <laughs> a bike and I think we find car parts as well and we find a lot of like big crates and yeah we find we find a lot of tires as well they're very big and I just um because he's almost uh half 11 well some people would like to know what age were you when you started campaigning um i was it was shortly after my 11th birthday right and you had always you have had an interest anyway even before that yeah i've been really interested in um in like marine life since i was around eight or nine because I, I, I really love dolphins i used to be really obsessed with dolphins and <laughs> You know, and I, and I, I didn't want dolphins to be in danger. Right. And on this note, then, I'd like to know, um, maybe you can leave us with a message uh, how to encourage young people like you who would like to start to take action, maybe doing something alongside with you or similar to what you do, but have no idea of where to start from. How would you encourage them? Well, I, I started with, I started with going going down to the beach with a litter picker from the hardware store and just picking up a few bits of litter and that's all that's all there really is to it. Just just don't, don't even like think about it. Just do it. That's great, Claire. I think we can wrap up now. If people have more questions, they can drop us these questions, email us, and we will pass these questions to Anna so she will answer to any curiosity or any query you have about our project and how to get involved. Um, and well, now I just would like to say thank you to everybody who has been here today with us. A huge thank you to Anna for your ex excellent contribution, for your time with us, but most of all for all the enthusiasm for what you do. Just a few reminders um, before we say goodbye. I'd like to remind you about making your plastic promise. Uh, Claire has shared the link in the chat so you can make the plastic promise. Just Anna uh, did it <clears throat> and their school as well. If you don't get the chance to go click on the link today, just easy to type on the Google uh, search bar, uh, make your plastic promise. So just click on Plastic Promise, Live Here, Love Here. So it's uh, on the Live Here, Love Here website. Then if your friends or colleagues have missed the webinar today uh, or you feel your peers could benefit from it, then it will be soon up on our EcoSchools uh, website and also on our EcoSchools and I YouTube channel. So subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notification of all webinars and videos that we will uh, upload in the following weeks. And if you want to get your international certificate of attendance, there is one available. Um, the link has been shared in this chat as well. And again, check our website, our social media follow up 
uh, follow us on uh, our socials and like our pages uh, to know more about future events, future webinars and projects and so on. So thank you everyone and see you next time. Thank you so Bye. much for listening. Bye.